Hello, my dear gardening friends. Today I'm sharing with you four different projects, natural landscape projects, which I did in my garden, which added to the character and whimsical feel of my garden. The last one I just finished yesterday. And these natural gardening projects are great because we reuse resources from our gardens, which otherwise would end up in the garbage. We reuse resources which other people are disposing of, which other people don't need. These uh, projects are fun to make together with your kids or family. Um, they don't cost a lot of money. They are do-it-yourself projects and they blend very well with the harmonious background of the gardens. I always considered wood to be a great resource in our gardens. I'm sure a lot of you have uh, growing trees on the property and you know the nature of tree is that they want to become bigger and bigger and take all the space on top of our gardens so here in my garden i have this mulberry tree which seeded itself accidentally probably the bird brought the seed in and now it's running galore it loves it here and it's becoming too big so last year I, uh, not actual last year, this year in spring, I took away several branches from that mulberry tree and I built um, a gazebo for my roses, climbing roses. You will see them next year, hopefully blooming. So project number one. Well, let's call this project Natural Twigs Gazebo. Well, I know that gazebo has eight sides, so maybe pergola? I don't know. I just, you know what, I just looked and I just realized that I didn't finish, I didn't cut these last several sticks here with a saw. But this area here was always kind of messy because we have uh, raspberry uh, bushes growing here and you know, raspberries are always uh, on a run, they always want to run, they always sucker, and they don't look very attractive. And as a result, this area was always, even despite this fencing, which I created here, it always looked kind of uncapped. And I thought about it for a while, and I wanted to do something different here, to introduce height, some sort of a, a vertical structure, and because that vertical structure would be permanent, it will stabilize this area. So here we go. I had a plan to create it in spring, didn't have time, and finally yesterday I spent a good chunk of the day to raise this structure. So what do you need for this, uh, to create something like this? These structures are very forgiving, very easy to build. They are basically made out of twigs, branches, whatever you have in the garden. So if you have trees growing on your property, and majority of us, we do have trees, and what do trees do? Trees do the best, what they do, they grow. Uh, you can just store them somewhere in a hidden space. For example, in my garden, I store them here behind, behind my vegetable uh, bed. And the uh, twigs, uh, branches, stay there. They uh, usually don't rot right away, a year or two. Uh, and whenever I need them around the garden, I use them. Uh, a good point about the age of um, wood. Uh, you know, wooden uh, branches are unique and they're very raw looking, very twisty and not straight lined. Uh, and they have a tendency to harden when they're old. So if you're planning to use a project where you have to bend and twist and fit wood to um, you kind of mold into the shape you want. Make sure that you use young wood, meaning wood which you just cut out. Uh, since that uh, wood doesn't solidify, didn't solidify yet, but otherwise if you wait several weeks, wood will get hardened and rather than bending, it will snap under your uh, pressure. So for this project, I needed two drills. One drill I was using to make holes in the wood and another drill I was putting the screws in. What else do you need? You need screws of different sizes. Just make sure that screw goes all the way through the first branch and securely goes into the second branch. And basically that's it, and a ladder, and your skills and imagination. So what I did at the beginning, I digged four different holes and I understand that this structure is not going to last for a long time. Um, but surprisingly, 
In my garden, structures like that, made out of twigs, is lasting, persisting for many years already. So I'm suspecting that this uh, uh, fairly fragile construction will be here for several years. So that is the reason why I didn't put cement into the holes, because I know that I don't want to keep that, um, uh, those branches in the soil for many, many years. At some point, I can expect that they will be gone. So I dig the holes approximately one foot deep. I installed the branches and I made sure that I found branches which are of the same shape. Now, for example, in this project, this uh, gazebo looking arch, uh, I was looking for a shape in branches which were twisted to one side. This way I can naturally create the shape of uh, the gazebo. And I found four of them. One was a little bit off, so I had to readjust it. And then I made sure that I found the uh, arching branches. And again, if you have freshly cut wood, you kind of can, you can kind of manipulate it. I couldn't because my wood was already hardened. Uh, my advice in projects like this, make sure that you go for an easy design because twigs and branches are all twisted and they all uneven and um, maybe it's a beauty of natural things you know of, of uh, raw wood so go for an easy design which is um, very for our eyes easy to pick and recognize for example here on this gazebo i decided to make just simple um, i would say sheets of uh, uh, design here with twigs going down something like a roof and that's it nothing else uh, and I think it's working well here so for my raspberries um, I raise them up so you can see that they look kind of awkward looking because all the leaves are not adjusted yet but once they get adjusted this area is going to be well managed and would look much better what do you think let's compare the picture the first picture where there was nothing here, no vertical space. And then the picture here where we have this interesting gazebo. And I know that this gazebo, because it's so airy, it's not going to stop the snow. Snow is not going to knock it down. Snow will just go through it and it will make an interesting uh, picture during the winter days when snow is here, greenery is not here and nothing to entertain our eyes. I will have this vertical space, vertical construction to look at. Project number two, self-installed patio. And this patio is installed from rocks which we found on our property and also from the rocks which people were disposing of. So again, reusing resources in your garden. And you know what, very often I think about big, strong, uh, hardscaping projects which people do on their smallish properties. And they can have a tendency to overpower 
small piece of land because they're so perfect, they're so well made, so they're so big that into my liking they kind of overpower the landscape and uh, I'm surprised that not many people in US use this technique so basically what you do you find the flattest level of uh, the stone and these stones are field stones so they're very irregular very difficult to find that flat shape uh, but try to find if you are into making uh, something like this Try to find the flat shape of the stone and then all the rest lay the stone deep into the soil and try to match the flat surface with all other flat surfaces on the same level and start building your stones. So basically all these stones are laid on bare land. I try to use here uh, gravel, which I had, then I ran out of gravel. So I just laid all the stones on the bare soil and look. Um, already several years and my stones are doing fine they're going through winter and we do have cold winters uh, they don't change their shape their position the only thing which I would say there are two suggestions two suggestions about laying stone directly onto the ground is that you can plant all sorts of ground covers around those stones and because by default, stones are so informal, this type of patio is so informal. In a way, everything goes here. So look at this little thing. I planted creeping thyme here, and it's a charming little plant, happily going around where it's not stepped on, and slowly is occupying all this area and slowly spreading around. I made a mistake and I planted together with creeping thyme, I planted uh, kitchen thyme, the taller variety, and that guy, those guys were taking over so I had to weed them out right from here. So hopefully creeping thyme will be able to colonize this area successfully in several years. And creeping thyme loves basking on the sun, here I have partial shade. And the response of uh, creeping thyme is that it doesn't want to bloom as well in summer, which is fine. I'm happy with um, green foliage of this wonderful shy, I would say, ground cover. So here on another side, we have tall kitchen thyme, just to show you. And I let it grow there. Nobody's stepping on it. It's kind of sensitive to food traffic. And it's just growing there happily, making a nice little presence on this patio. So the uh, positive thing about a uh, natural stones patio is it's very impo uh, informal and you can do a lot of uh, planting on it. It's very flexible. Another thing is if you do stones like I did near big trees, you might run into roots coming and here is my big root two years ago it was a little guy coming again from my famous mulberry tree and it's amazing how strong roots can be they literally can pick up stones which is exactly what's happening here last year only one stone was picked now look at this these two are getting picked so that's another thing to consider. If you plant stones near big trees, just uh, keep in mind that in the future, you might need to adjust uh, stone height to accommodate those roots growing. So what I'm going to do, I probably will uh, just let the root go, build stones around it, and root will become as part of um, uh, design here. And look at this. This is my favorite stone right here. I always wonder what the history of the stone is, but it looks like a millstone and I put it into the center of my patio right here near my back bench. Oh, our neighbor's dog is saying hello right there. He can see me from my rattle fence. Hi, Bobo. Hello. He's wiggling his tail. Sometimes I give him treats. So he's probably waiting for his treat right now. So this is a suggestion 
uh, design idea, natural design idea number two. Another useful idea which you can implement in your garden with a lot of fun and on a budget would be to lay the bricks uh, between the flower or vegetable beds and your grass. This area here was struggling constantly with grass uh, trying to get in, you know to, trying to invade the area where my uh, flowers grow. So two years ago I decided to acquire bricks which are used bricks nobody used nobody needed them they were being thrown away so i acquired them and i installed these bricks to separate two areas and uh, uh, for the first two years i must say that it works very well i what i all what i need to do i just need to run the mower on the bricks and i don't need to edge it for maybe two three uh, times i mow and uh, it works very well of course, weeds do need, do want to invade, but again, um, a little bit of weeding, a little bit of trimming, and uh, my bricks are doing their job very well. And the beauty of vintage bricks is that a lot of them do have custom stamps, and uh, some of them are really interesting. And I was doing the research on the internet about the history of bricks, and I found a lot of interesting information. For example, here, a lot of bricks in my garden are from 1926. They have that stamp on. There, is also, um, there are also different names. And my best one is this little guy, Tuttle, Tuttle brick. My kids love that brick and they always remember it because we were installing it together. So that can be another uh, interesting and memorable project to do with kids. Go to the place where people, or maybe you know someone who doesn't need uh, bricks. In my area, I uh, regularly see people disposing of old bricks. Or you can acquire them, you can purchase them. And uh, those old names and the ways they, the bricks ages in the garden is quite interesting. Plus, it's functional. Uh, so what we did, I dig the trench and I installed maybe two inches of uh, uh, sand and on that I laid bricks and at the beginning I was kind of skeptical thinking that bricks will move because they were they are here on an angle but they don't for two years they're doing the job very well they're keeping the mower away from my plants and um, they are aging very well they're getting this wonderful aged patina and looking organic in the garden and by the way look at my rose she has a beautiful scent. It is a um, Bliss Parfuma Rose, and this is her first year in the garden. And this uh, fall, she decided to create this big, tall stem and created several lovely blooms. And she has a nice scent. And finally, project number four. Here I have my vettel fence, which is uh, breaking approximately every second year. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fix it while I'm talking to you about this great project and why it's so wonderful, especially for kids. First of all, kids love to work with their hands, with their twigs. And look at these twigs, they're all flexible, they're all fresh, they are all, they all bend and they don't snap. And uh, kids love to just manipulate product in their hands, you know, but they manipulate things in their hands. So. This one is continuously repaired. One part is being repaired, another part is standing strong. So at this point, my little vettel fence is standing there strong. I repaired it this spring, but this guy was not. So you can see that because I'm putting uh, sticks directly into the soil, they rot. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to take it all together away. I have these freshly uh, cut twigs. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to install them at the space where old twigs used to be. 
I'm not going to get rid of the old twigs. I will just kind of leave them and let them break on their own terms. I can still serve his purpose. Yeah, this guy is still holding on. The same with this guy. Okay. So whatever is not repairable, out it goes. So basically what I do, I just bend the twigs install them and again our gardens are full of resources like that You know what? I truly believe that that intuitive knowledge of nature and how to deal with plants comes in childhood. And if we let kids play with something like this and it at the level of play, they will be more comfortable to be around gardens and to know what to do. For example, today I was sitting and having lunch on the porch with my daughter. And I said to her, dear, do you know why I put sauces under the um, plant uh, containers and she said no why is water accumulated there I said you know what I explained why we have sources under the containers why it is important for the water to go all the way down and show up in the container and I said to her you know what my dear that's how you learn and that's how in the future you will have this intuitive knowledge of plants and of gardening so this can be projects like this can be a great entry point for kids to play around with nature and again these twigs are fresh that's why they bend so easily and they're not perfect as you can see my thing is not perfect here but you know what I don't worry about it that's the beauty of these little projects That's it. So these are the adventures I'm having in my garden. Please do subscribe if you like what I'm creating for you. And I will see you next time.